Okay, I have here what I think is a pretty exciting project. Um, I just want to say up front, you know, not not financial advice, all that stuff. And um, I'm just a normal person. I mean, I'm not going to throw a bunch of edits on these videos, although the people that do them, you know, I do appreciate that on YouTube. I just don't have the time for it. So all of this is usually like a stream of consciousness, like I said, the last uh, video. And I try to dive deeply into these projects and I'm going to do more and more of these videos. I've got a couple more that I'm lining up that, uh, that I think are just as good as this one here, but I do have some experience with this type of project, uh, in that I've invested in one like this before. So I think I can offer some, you know, a little bit more insight than somebody that hasn't really done, uh, nodes or, or done mining, that sort of thing, especially with a virtual server. But, um, anyway, we'll get into that. So what this is, is uh, it's called Metrozynth, and the ticker is MXH. And you can actually get to everything off of their website here. But I mean, obviously, it's it's a really basic website, uh, but you know, it has everything you need. They got their Twitter down here and everything. They got their GitHub. Uh, there's a dashboard that I'm going to show in a minute. There's a documentation page. I've already got it opened up somewhere else. But um, I think we're real early on this one. This is probably the first video. I mean, I looked through YouTube. I couldn't find any video on this project. So I've been uh, trying to talk to the devs on Telegram and get as much information as I can. And so now I'm going to kind of tell you what I found out so far. But um, I am already invested in it as far as, um, you know, I, I put a little bit in yesterday. And I think I bought a little bit more today when it dipped. But uh, it is up, up about 100x, I believe. Although you know, the first people that invested in it, there were probably very few people and, you know, they may have already sold some of their, you know, basically there's just a lot of, a lot of new wallets coming in is what it seems like to me. Uh, cause it is going up today, but we'll see. I mean, I, I don't like to invest in things that are up this high, but, uh, I really don't understand, you know, it started at about 10,000 market cap, $10,000. And I think it's at 10 million now. Yesterday it was at, um, I think it was at maybe, 7 million yesterday FDV. But anyway, we'll, we'll get into it. We'll look at it uh, some more and just kind of go over some of those things. So let's see. Uh, this was something I posted just recently. But before I get into that, let me just give you a brief overview. Let's see if I can find that. Okay, we'll start here. Uh, so currently, <clears throat> it's at about 10 cents. And... I don't know if it's show. Oh, yeah, here it is right here. So there's 100 million total supply MXH, which is good. I mean, it's it's not highly diluted. Let's see. I don't think there's anything else there to really talk about. All time highs, 10 cents. That's what it's at currently. And it's only available on Uniswap. And again, if um, you know, all you have to do if you want to purchase it is just go on their website, metrozenth.io, to make sure that you get the correct contract and everything. And you click on the button that says chart and it takes you straight to Dex tool. So it's really simple. Okay, so that's all we really need to talk about there. So here's their documentation page. Um, I'm going to try to, you know, there's a lot of information here. So I'm going to try to really simplify it for you because I've already kind of learned what it does and what it's about. And that's why I'm interested in it because I understand it a little bit. Uh, let me find it here. Okay. So the idea, um, you know, if you take this and some of their medium posts that they've already made, what this is, is a, it's a project where, uh, you know, there's going to be nodes and miners, uh, that allow people like you and me that don't really want to purchase tens of thousands of dollars of hardware. Uh, you know, one of those GPU miners, you know, there's a really big price tag to entering crypto mining, you know, whether it be Bitcoin or anything else. And uh, that's one of the things that's really nice about this one, because you're going to be mining better coins than what I believe Bitcoin is as far as uh, profitability. So, so what they do is they're, they're allowing you to do it with a virtual server. And actually, let me let me bring this up because it'll make it a lot more clear. So here's the, uh, you know, kind of like the dashboard. 
and this is still a work in progress. There's actually, uh, you know, it's a beta uh, setup currently where they've already got everything as far as the UI set up, but they haven't made the connectivity yet as far as, uh, you know, people getting rewards and, uh, you know, setting up their own node. But once they do, like, like I'll, I'll just give you my background. I got people and myself in into Gala very early back in two, was it 20? I don't remember if it was late 2019 or early 2020, but it was somewhere around there. So basically the very bottom of Gala and they had these things called founder nodes. And um, what I do instead of running it off my machine is I will use uh, like a virtual server on some kind of website somewhere, whether it's, um, I forget what some of them are, like Vulture, I think has virtual servers. And so I'll set up like an Ubuntu uh, operating system on it, or, you know, you can do a Microsoft windows and it's, it's a really lengthy process where you have to constantly keep the software updated. You have to constantly make sure that, um, you know, you're, you're doing all the backend stuff to, to make sure the server continues to work correctly and you keep getting your rewards. And by the way, I'm going to timestamp everything like I do normally. So if this is boring to you, you can jump around. Um, but you know, basically what, Metrozenth is talking about is they're they're setting this up as where it's you know maybe just a couple of clicks and you know maybe just some real basic information and you can set up your own node you know you can go ahead and start mining and two of the big coins that they are uh, going to be allowing people to mine are let's see I think they have it on here well currently they do have Tau on their TAO, TAO bit tensor. But I remember yesterday it actually had, uh, I think it was Caspa. So you'll be able to do Caspa, BitTensor. Uh, you'll be able to do ETH as well, which I doubt you know many people will do that, but some will. Now, I just want to verify that real quick. Let me make sure I'm telling you right. Because I do have it posted here. Tell... Oh, sorry. Did I say Caspa? Yeah, okay. So if I said Caspa, that's what I meant. So Tau, Caspa, and ETH. And so that's the dashboard. Looks real nice. I mean, there's a lot of options over here if you want to mess with that. But uh, there's some stuff I don't know that they've really gone into yet. I'm going to talk about an AMA they did just the other day uh, on their Medium page and give you the link to that. But um, there's a lot of interesting stuff over here, like a marketplace. Uh, what else? Miners Bank. This this kind of this Miners Bank kind of reminds me of something else. They're they're planning on doing a um, like a proof of work back stable coin for some DeFi elements. So I'm trying to remember exactly what they said about that. It's in the it's in the information here, I believe. I'd have to go back through it and find it. But um, anyway, these are AI managed nodes and miners, you're going to be able to use virtual machines. You don't have to have your own equipment. And uh, I click in here to this. There's a lot of information here. I mean, you can go through this and really understand it all pretty easily if if you're into this. Oh, here we go. Uh, this is right. OK, here, here's something interesting. Currently, um, so of course, these are, I don't know if they're going to keep it this way, but this visually tells you the more metrozinth that you own, the better system, you know, the better, better, um, when you set up a virtual manager or, or a virtual system on a, um, you know, a, a remote node like this, basically they're handling the hardware or somebody that they hired. And depending on how many MXH you have here, the better computer you get, basically. I mean, just to keep it simple. So if you get the one, like say you have 25,000 Metrozenth here, you're going to get a really basic level computer that has two gigabytes of RAM. It's got 30 gigabytes of SSD memory. And then there's, you know, there's more information there, I'm sure. But uh, they're just calling that vCPU1. And so if you go all the way here to, uh, that could be cores, I'm not sure. But if you go all, here, all the way here to the the best one, you, know, you can clearly see that you're, you know, if you were building a computer, this is the computer that you'd want. It would run everything much more efficiently. You get more rewards. 
uh, just better all around. It makes more sense to try to get the best one that you can. Let's see if they have any more information here. I actually didn't look at this. Um, yeah, so you can check your token balance. You can launch your VM here. Okay, here's... So here it is pending, and, and they're just showing some, some of the features. But like, say, you set up the system, here it's pending and hasn't been verified yet, or here it's on hold, and then finally it's verified. And that means now you're starting to stake your coins or uh you know maybe your nodes running whatever it may be let's see my understanding is that you're going to receive if you have a tau um or a cas node then that's the coin that you receive as a miner or a node holder whatever you want to call it um there is another I saw that it mentioned USDC here somewhere. I'd have to get in more into that. I'd have to ask them that question because I'm, I'm really not sure. I know some one of the ones that you do, one of the uh, options that you can do pays you in USDC maybe, but anyway, which is, you know, it, it's pretty nice if you want something that's just going to be stable. Like if it's a bear market or something, uh, it's a good option. So yeah, here they talk about the dashboard. Metro Dow. Oh, okay, that's like a governance thing. Okay. Yeah, all, all these projects have governance now to where if you hold this coin, then you have so much voting uh, authority. And, you know, the more you hold, the more votes you get. But the the dev team, just in general, they, they've been real active. And actually, if I go over here to... Um, if I go over here to the GitHub, you can actually see some of the activity and some of the uploads. And, uh, you know, I'm sure there's people out there listening to this that have a lot more technical ability than I do. I know a little bit of coding, but, uh, you know, you may be able to look through this stuff and get even more confidence in the project, you know, if you're thinking about investing in it and not sure yet. Let's see. Oh, and this is a good point. I mean, you, you may want to look through this stuff. Here, here's the verified contract, number one. Uh, let's see, the token distribution is 95% liquidity pool, and then 5% uh, is set aside for central exchange listings and bridging. And then the token tax, there is a token tax currently, but I've seen them say multiple times that there is a plan in the future. Once they get enough nodes and miners up and running, they're going to or the plan is at least to eliminate the tax, which is good for scalability. You know, you want to see that. Let's see, uh, real yield for holders, 50%. Then the other 50% goes to infrastructure investment and infrastructure maintenance. And here's the voting power stuff we talked about a second ago. Anyway, there's a lot more information here than I really want to get into. Um, I think here's a here's a really good thread on it. And I'll make sure to link this if I can remember. Uh, this person's name is crypto underscore sage. And he did a really, he or she did a really good job of kind of bringing this all together. And you can read through it. I mean, I'll, I can briefly go through it here. Let's see. Yeah, so he's talking about here virtual servers. Uh, cloud real world asset, which is tokenized miners, and then community owned nodes. And, and the neat thing about the nodes is they're they're run by AI as far as the um, the setup, and so the you know it's templated already, and it's just a few clicks and you're done. Let's see. So so yields the reason why most people are interested in it, other than the coin going up. You know you want to make money off the coin going up as well. Uh, sort of I sort of see this. There's a lot of restaking. Um, coins out there like Mubi. I did a 10x on that one, but you know, once a coin is ready to go down, most people just go ahead and sell the coin and, and don't restake. But there are some people with big wallets that just go ahead and keep restaking. Uh, Cause like with Mubi, you get um, BSSB or Dova or some other kind of BRC20 related coin similar to Mubi. So people kind of stay within that network and uh, you know, they'll purchase the same coins or sell the same coins depending on what's going on. Let's see. So this one, of course, the you know the Tau and the CAS 
Uh, there's going to be a lot of communities interested in this one because um, these are two of the biggest projects. These are probably two of the projects that are going to end up in the you know top 20, top 50 once the bull run's done. Uh, you know, because these Cass and Tao, I think, um, you know, from what I've seen on Twitter, are two of the most talked about projects. And if you look at somebody like uh, Braver Crypto here, which a lot of you probably already know about him. He'll talk about his top his top coins, but I don't know how far down I'd, I'd have to go here to find it. But um, anyway, yeah, here we go. Here's Cass. I don't know where Tao is on here, but I, I know it's in, you know, he's he's posted about it plenty of times before. And there's some really big communities with this one. So I know a lot of people that are interested in those two coins would love to have a node that they didn't have to purchase really expensive hardware and could just set it up easily. I mean, it, it just makes it really simple this way. Uh, da, da, da. Okay, so the team's currently not doxxed, but they have three full stack engineers and five moderators. And they're working on onboarding a business director. So <laughs> if there's somebody out there that's a good business director, maybe reach out to them. They've been coding 18 months. Dedication is showing. Uh, the current MVP and UX are amazing. I agree. I mean, the, the UI looks incredible at this stage. And I think we're not too far from having nodes active. In fact, they just... Let me go back to my profile here because I posted this or reposted this. Here we go. Uh, MXH's, this is by OX Spirit Guard. Image, MXH's first Tau Bit Tensor Miner is up and running. One click nodes coming soon, allowing every single DGEN to gain access to ETH Caspa and Tau nodes without any technical knowledge. You don't even need to pay for the nodes VMs. Your tokens can be unstaked at any time. And that's a big point, too, right? You, you can pull the. Uh, I don't know if there's any sound to this. No. I guess they're just. They're just showing the blocks coming through. So yeah, that that's huge. Like with movie, you have to wait three days. Like say if you, which isn't bad. I mean, there's other coins that take 21 days to unstake, which is horrible. And some where you get locked up for a year. So just be careful with that. Um, but the, I hope they keep it this way because people want to jump in and out. And uh, I think it would, attract more people to want to uh, stake, which which that's one of the options, by the way, where you just stake it. And I think that's where that 50% of the revenue comes in based on the the full pool of people. But, um, you know, the other option, of course, is the, the hey, let me see how I, how I explain this. Hang on. Because I, I really explained it in just a few words. So short version, you can run your own tech. Tau cast nodes using AI driven, I uh, said one click virtual servers, but it's a few clicks without the need for expensive hardware or complicated software. And then they did, you know, launch that node last week. I just looked at their, um, let's see what this said here. Yeah, here we go. They, they just acquired five units of various NV link high speed GPU models to start mining Tau from January 1st. I mean, this is like up to date information. Uh, next week, another five will join our army. It says to save your MXH tokens, MXH, MXH staking for users not utilizing Metrozent computation, computational resources, you will receive a bonus of up to 40% in real, real yield biweekly after each cycle. I don't know what the cycle is exactly, but that's a pretty big bonus there. I mean, usually if you can get in with get into things like this early on, you get the best yields. You can exchange your staking rewards to USDC, run your own towel mounter with one click. Uh, oh, maybe that's where I got that from. MetroZynth is evolving its computational power to GPU servers, enabling mining on bit servers, subnet 27. These miners are self-managed by you and linked to your wallet. Through simple steps, you'll be mining towel and receiving them directly in your bit tensor address. And you can also run your, your own ETH node. So this is really telling, I think. I mean, you've got a you got a development team that's putting out information like this at the very start of the year. I mean, the next day when people could be taking time off 
or maybe they posted this last night. I'm not sure. But anyway, it's obvious that they're active and that's what's important in a lot of these projects. Okay. I think that's all I wanted to say on that. I know that was a lot to listen to, but oh, here's one more thing and then I'll get to the chart. So they had an AMA, I think on the 26th. So it was about four or five days ago. And there's really a lot of things here. I mean, I don't, I don't know that I'm going to go through everything. I'll just, I haven't even read it, but um, let's see. It says their revenue comes from multiple miners, multiple cryptocurrencies. How does revenue share work? That's an important one. Let's see. So it's based on your staking holdings. It's kind of like a dividend share that, that makes sense. Uh, running a virtual machine is not a requirement for revenue share, but it contributes to the overall ecosystem. Uh, staking for non-VM VM users will also be enabled. I mean, to me, I'm sure VM users will get more of a, a reward. I mean, you have to. So yeah, that doesn't really go completely into it, but you know, there's multiple ways to get rewarded is basically what they're saying. Let's see, computing power comes from various enterprise grade cloud providers. So yeah, it's uh, data centers where they've already set up the units or they're setting up units and then uh, you, know, you get one of those units to run your node on. It's the same thing as if you had it at your house, but it's just cloud computing somewhere else and then you don't have to bother with all the, you know, the uh, maintenance, if there's any maintenance has to be done. Uh, let's see. Okay, so this is interesting. So their main competitors is RG DAG, Nebula, Chainback, Talpad, Coldstack, and other cloud projects. So they consider themselves a cloud project. Let's see, despite sharing, they feel like they differentiate by offering community owned revenue and tokenizing hardware into ERC 721 and 1155 contracts. This gives the freedom to buy or sell these shares. So that must be what that marketplace link was on their UI. So DeFi features in the roadmap, such as loans, synthetic or wrapped assets. That's important. There's more and more wrapped assets these days uh, or a stable coin backed by mining, including off-chain loans. So that was the proof of work stable coin that we talked about earlier. Okay, let's see. Marketing plans. They're going to be doing collaborations with crypto projects, companies for infrastructure usage. And they're reaching out to key opinion leaders with a focus on the Asian community, especially in China. So that's interesting. I wonder if they're, I don't know if they're China based or not. Hmm. Um, don't see anything there. Has mining hardware been purchased? Not yet. 80% of the project wallet or 4% from fees will go to buy miners. Okay, each piece of hardware will be tokenized. For example, if we acquire an Ice River KSM3, which is a CASFA miner, and the price is 9,000, we will split that miner into clusters. First cluster will consist of 100 tokens, each priced at $90. Each token will have its metadata and API linked to the miner for real-time information accessible via IEFS and dashboard contributing to decentralization. So uh, that tells us that, you know, they are putting a lot of money up front, although they've raised a lot of revenue as well, but you know, they're, they're putting the money towards the hardware and uh, at least from this, it sounds like they're being transparent with everything on the dashboard, which, uh, you know, they feel contributes to decentralization, which everybody wants. So there's no partnerships yet. They have two collaborations in progress. Results will be shown in the coming days after the holiday period. So that's interesting. There'll be some big news coming up. Uh, is the team planning to be doxxed? How many are in the team? Team doxing is not in our immediate plans. The team consists of three. Okay, so this was the other thing we talked about. Uh, soon they'll have an onboard, onboard a business director. Okay. So somebody, well, yeah, somebody in the AMA must ask if any plan on group notes. I guess what they mean there is fractional. 
uh, investment, basically. You know, like like splitting up the node into multiple parts, then multiple people can use the same node uh, to make revenue. That's what I assume they're talking about there anyway. And they're saying not at the moment. I mean, fractional is going to be the future, so I'm sure they will if if they feel like they need to. Okay, so benefits of running a node, earn rewards, uh, actively participate in the network, contribute to the security of the Ethereum network, and supporting overall scalability. And, and I think that's just you know part of the infrastructure, right? If we all want this new this new future, it's almost like when the uh, they talk about Web one, Web two, Web three. It's back when the web was first developed. Uh, you know, everything was owned by one entity, and and slowly over time, things have become more and more. Uh, you know, with each iteration it's become to where we own more and more things. And that's the decentralized idea. Uh, you know, so, so we get, get tokens for providing liquidity or we get tokens for, um, you know, just participating in the project basically kind of like NFTs and all that kind of stuff. And I think by the way, um, that is one thing that this person talked about. I don't I must have closed that. I need to bring that back up. So yeah, so right here where, where this person was talking about it, um, what were they talking about? Kind of lost my train of thought there. What were we talking about here? Benefits of running nodes, scalability, infrastructure. I don't know. I kind of lost my thought. But uh, anyway, the taxes, we talked about that. They want to get rid of that in the future once they can. And they talked about the collaborations there. Okay. Let's just jump into this chart here real quick. And again, I, I just want to make a point. The market cap started at 10K and it shot way up. And I will say that I don't know for sure, you know, what kind of happened in this area. If, if people that bought in this area just kept holding and they, you know, and it might cause a, a lot of resistance up here somewhere. I suspect that some of the people that bought in here are probably going to hold for a very long time. And some of it, of course, is, you know, liquidity that's locked up, <clears throat> but I don't really understand all that stuff. So I'm not really going to speak to it, but I will say this, as far as the chart goes, currently, and I don't, I mean, this doesn't make any sense to me, actually. Let me just try this. trying to say it's up 800 times but i don't i think earlier what i figured was it was about 100 anyway it's not coming up the right way on here so it, it is up there quite a bit but it's a new project <clears throat> and the fdv the um uh fully diluted value is i think it's about 10 million now after this move so in that regard, it's, it's, you know, it's a brand new project. doesn't matter that it was 10 K at one time. Uh, you're going to get some flush out of the early adopters, the early investors, and then you'll get new people coming in and it'll push it up higher. That's just how it goes. But what I like to do, and, and y'all saw it with the reef video, uh, I am a pattern trader. So I try to find patterns and of course the market structure and support resistance is, is, you know, really key. Patterns don't really matter until you consider your support resistance first, but sometimes I'll bring it up side by side while I'm talking about it. So this is all I really care about is the current price action. I, I can't really be concerned about all this down here. I'm going to put it here on the hourly. Actually, I'll put it on a four hour chart. And I just want to show some similarities here. So this was the breakout of movie where I got in and I made a 10 X on it. And about halfway up, movie needed to do like a uh, a little rest here before it it moved up again. So you had people that you know maybe bought way down here or bought here. They were taking profits, and then you got new people step in, or you know maybe they bought back in here and they pushed it up again. And now movie is um, it's probably a pretty close to finding its bottom again. It's only up about ten x. I believe that's right on this one. Uh, this may not be the full chart for it. 
but anyway, as far as this goes, it's up about you know, 10 or 11 X. And I'm going to show you how the structure of this middle area here, this pattern looks very similar to this. At least to me. Doesn't mean it has to be this. And, and I want to, I want to emphasize that because there are points that we can use to say, well, if this doesn't happen, and I talked about that last video, it's almost like being a, an algebra problem or, uh, you know, a computer yourself. You're just saying like an if then statement, if this happens, then this is going to happen. But if this happens, then this other thing is going to happen. So it's really always a 50, per, uh, 50, 50, uh, situation with crypto. You know, you have to, you have to have parameters that if something goes the other way on you, then you just let it go. And then you wait until it gives you that, you know, the move back above to create support again, and then you can enter again and you keep yourself from having to deal with a lot of downside risk. But I'm not saying it's going to go down right now. I'm just, that's just an example. So already you can probably tell that this looks somewhat similar. Um, I might have to, might have to actually go down just a bit on these. Yeah, it looks pretty close. Okay, so right away, what I would usually want to do, I mean, that, the first thing that jumps out at me is this looks like a retest of the breakout of this whole move. And this isn't, I mean, this didn't take long at all for it to make, make it to this move, which tells me either it has a lot of momentum to the upside. Like this has only been eight days. And I think movie took about the same. Let's see. Probably from here, five days. So maybe it was a little bit quicker. So that that's what I'm thinking. I mean, th there's a good chance that it's going to keep moving up because usually you don't consolidate for just this short amount of time and then push up again. Now there is one other option. It's that there's a deviation up here and it's going to come back down. But this coin, I'm not really noticing that there's a whole lot of smart wallets in it. In fact, that was one thing I forgot to bring up for you. I actually did mean to bring this up. I'll get into the chart again here in a second. First, I want to do this just to show. Am I typing that in wrong? Oh, it's MXH, isn't it? So here's your smart money and there are currently the number of holders continues to increase for smart money. And again, smart money, uh, according to Nansen and some of these other apps, it's just a person or a wallet that has been profitable for, you know, 30, 90, 180 days. Uh, you know, it just, it labels them as, as a more profitable trader that knows kind of where to get in, where to get out. And, uh, you know, make some good decisions, basically. Total smart money balance, about 4 million with 20 smart money holders. And the current transactions lean more to the buy side, of course, because it's going up. But the value is not huge. I mean, there's some of them that are, well, this one sold about 10,000. Uh, but as far as the wallets themselves, here's some of the bigger balances. So there's the top 10 has at least a million and then you get into the next top 10, the next, you know, the total top 20 and they're like quarter of a million or half a million or three quarters of a million coins. So, so there's definitely people that see the value in this and they got in very early. Let's see. So the last 30 days, There's half a million all the way up to 5 million. Of course, some, some of these are liquidity. Like here's the liquidity pool for Uniswap. I'm not sure what this is. 
but these are probably bigger wallets as you get into here, like million, two million, three million dollar wallets. I don't see, here's a little bit of selling here. There's really no selling in here. Most people are just holding. I just want to go down a little bit and see. There's a little bit more selling, a little bit here, a little bit here. So yeah, mostly holders. I mean, I don't know. Let me bring up this other thing. I'm still trying to get this other company, Alphanomics, to... give me access to the pro oh, let me log into this thing all right this is just a fake wallet that i use it's it's not even my real wallet I just use it to get into this system because this is free. Oh, I'm still on Reef. And they do have a thing where you can see, okay, so here's here's the top holders. But see here, this pro stuff here I can't get to. So there is an option. Let's see if I can find somebody that just holds this coin. That would be nice. Because there's, there's an option where you can you can see where they bought and where they sold and that sort of thing. I don't know if it'll actually show on here, though. I don't know. I don't see it here. It's a nice little option, though. I mean, if, if, they would, if this company would give me access, I'm still waiting on it. If they'd give me access, I could show you some of the better features. But anyway, um, we'll just stick to Nansen for now. That's kind of the... The idea behind this currently uh, distribution. I mean, there's some really big wallets that are accumulating this. So somebody believes in it anyway. What's this orange line? Oh, that's the liquidity pool. Okay. All right. So back to the chart. Uh, we're seeing some resistance here currently. So what's important to me is, and I think it probably is going to come down some more and just kind of grind up because this this is what I was seeing on the over here, like if we we kind of do that, maybe it's pretty close. And then we say, okay, so that that's our new base case. It has to stay above this purple line. That you know, the the if then statement. That's all it is. It has to stay above that line, which is right at 07. And then we can do a trend line and say, okay, it kind of looks like that. And then this trend line's you know pretty much the exact same thing. And now we're starting to see, okay. You know, this pattern makes a lot of sense, especially if I was to bring this down to like an hourly chart. You got this all coming down and then it kind of makes this M and pumps out of it and makes this M coming down. Actually, that's more like a W. So here's your W, here's your M. Um, I'd have to really get way down to see what this looked like. So here's a little shoulder, a little shoulder. And here's kind of a shoulder head. I guess you could call that like a shoulder. But it, you know, you start kind of losing it here because it's not as uh, obvious. But here's a pretty good peak right there. So either I would actually bring this down like that, maybe. So either we're kind of right in here, or versus this chart anyway, it's in here and it's just going to grind up. I mean, this looks more obvious right there, and that still makes kind of sense, you know, some sense anyway, as far as uh, a resistance area, although it's not perfect. I usually like to grab the wicks there. Yeah, I mean, this looks more similar, like if you're just talking about what things look like, then, you know, these two make sense to me. But what I would want to see at this point, just see what it looks like over here. I guess you could take this one. I don't know what this angle is going to be exactly, but you know, maybe more like this. But you can kind of see it now how this might be that, or this whole thing might be that. That kind of makes sense too. And then you just you know you keep moving and moving up. 
I was thinking this one might do like a 5X or something, a 4X maybe in the next, what did I say, 20 days? It's a possibility anyway. I mean, I, I don't know for sure. If you look at just, I mean, it's already done a 3X from down here and that was, is that even a 3X? I don't even know. No, it's 2X, okay. Well, 200%, I guess is a better way to put it. So that was just from a day ago. So hopefully this cons uh, consolidation is complete at this point. And now it's going to make this move like movie. And then once it gets up here, it could go sideways for longer. <clears throat> but a lot of you know that, that know me better. I believe that these are just algorithmic patterns and that uh, all these exchanges are connected. And, uh, you know, somebody could sell off a bunch, but the algorithm is going to maintain the price at a certain level. So I'm hoping that this pattern is going to be followed here. And if I had to put a, a target on it, could do it like this. I think this works anyway. Yeah, so that's like a two and a half. <clears throat> 250%, but I think it's going higher than that. Let me just check one more thing. Don't really remember how I came up with that. Let me check one thing. Oh, that's what it was. Okay. I was looking at what this one had done, which I must have pulled it from down here then. It's pretty close. So if we consider that this is similar, which it looks similar, so here and down here, this whole thing, and then we pull from that breakout, from that imbalance, that's right at 40 cents. Yeah. So 400 to 500% is what I was seeing from here. But again, it could take 10 to 20 days. I don't know what, exactly what the timing is on it. And so here's the, here's the other part of the if then statement. If I see anything like this, where it loses this support, like, you know, maybe it comes back down here, bounces around and then it comes under here like that with a four hour, it has to be a four hour candle. A one hour candle is not enough unless you just wait and see what the next two or three look like to get confirmation. But if I see anything like this, where it, it breaks below, retest that line at uh, zero seven, and I see a four hour candle under here, then I get more concerned and I say, well, you know, this pattern wasn't correct and you know, I need to reevaluate what's going on here. Um, you know, this is a long term project for me. If they had nodes already going, I'd be staked immediately. I'm just waiting for them to get started with it. So, you know, even if this was to happen, as long as it kind of held the same, you know, even if it came down and went sideways for longer, I'd be okay with that. I just don't want to be in something that's going way down. So it, it looks fine to me right now, though. I mean, if, if something was to happen uh, that I thought it looked like it was turning back around on us, then I, I would let everybody know through Twitter or something. Okay, I think I covered everything on this one. It's a pretty long video. Uh, hopefully you were able to kind of follow along with what I was saying. I, I know I talked real fast, but I'm going to provide the links for you so that you can uh, you know, check some of this stuff out on your own if you want. Okay, y'all have a good one.